the part about the whole return to office thing that I find is annoying is I got to drive an hour to jump on a Zoom call. Yeah, so that's I'm, I'm really glad I'm there. It's fucking stupid. <laughs> so that I that's can just unacceptable. sit in my cubicle and, and get on a conference call. It just, sorry, I don't see any collaboration in there, to be honest. It's just like high school. I used to collaborate with myself twice a day. I think that opens the show. <laughs> Welcome to the Bottle of Brown podcast. I am your host, Danny Paul. Joining me in the Bob Media Studios today is the Regent of Rage, the Baron of Bourbon, the Roy Kent of Rancho Santa Margarita. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, Leon Coventry. Well, thank you, Danny. I have a, I've had a very long day of day drinking, and uh, I hope I don't slur my words throughout the show tonight. And uh, good luck. Wasn't collaborative, was it? <laughs> it was not collaborative. <laughs> also joining me in the Bob Media Studios is the Pharaoh of Finance, the Sultan of Sport, the Khan of Contra Costa County. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jobs joins us today. Oh, yes! Gentlemen, gentlemen, yes, good to see you guys. Been a hot minute since we've been, minute. Uh, been yep. able to congregate and a minute. Uh, a minute. see what's going on. And it's good to see you guys. We're just coming off of the brown bracket, which was our previous mm-hmm. episode, which is episode mm-hmm. 63. This one is episode 64. We're recording on the 15th of September. Mr. Jones is a year older. Happy belated, buddy. <sighs> Happy belated. Yes, yeah, still hurts to get out of bed. After 40, it sucks. Yeah, that, that doesn't go away. <laughs> no. you just we, uh, get get once, once you get over 40, you're like, what fell off this year? <laughs> we're going to uh, we're going to lean into some politics this episode for uh, for the bobs out there that want to know why we haven't gone deep in the paint. We've got a couple of stories here that, that dig into the realms of uh, of older politicians. But let's begin the way we always do. What's your brand for tonight, boys? Tonight, uh, I'm, I'm back to the Baker's 7. I had to finish Ooh. off a bottle and open a new bottle. So tonight, uh, Baker's 7 single barrel. That sounds good. That sounds real good. That, that sounds good. Pretty yummy. It, it tastes like happiness and sunshine and rainbows. That's what it tastes yeah. like. Well, it's sounds... uh, 107 proof. It lights you up. But because I've been drinking all day long, uh, many different types of drinks, it, it still doesn't let you down. So if, you're, if you've been drinking all day, I recommend Baker seven. Is there, is there yeah. like one, two, three, four, five, and six, or is the seven attached to something? I have no idea why they call it Baker seven, seven huh. years minimum. So I'm guessing this is that it's been aged at least seven years. All right. Based on what it says to me on the bottle. Based on what it says on the bottle. Mr. Jones, what you rocking? Uh, you know, tried and true Eagle rare. Pretty much one of my oh, absolute all time favorites. Oh, that's a good one. Good, good call. I, Very nice. I just, got to say you could do it taster chest like test on these and i think eagle rare is by far one of the best bourbons out there if you could find yeah. it it's a big bottle Liam, is that the, the right one you price. brought to my house yes it is yeah okay yeah that was exceptionally good <clears throat> yeah. what's interesting about eagle rare is it's the same recipe and aged exactly the same amount of time as buffalo trace it's just in a different part of the warehouse where it doesn't expand and contract as much. So it, mm-hmm. uh, it's, it tastes a little bit spikier. It's interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's higher, higher or lower, right? Is that the idea? And the, I and the Rick that house one is the lowest. It's the lowest on the Rick house. So it doesn't, uh, it doesn't expect, it doesn't have the same uh, temperature variation. So it doesn't go in and out of the barrel as much as Buffalo trace does. And so it's got a sharper edge to it and it's uh, it's delicious. You know, but it's also not as prevalent as Buffalo Trace because you can only have one row on the bottom. So because it's <laughs> rare. Rare. Yeah. The eagle that flies low, I guess. I, no. <laughs> well, one of my in honor of our, uh, our second annual brown bracket, spoiler alert, I will be drinking the winner tonight. 
Oh, oh Knob oh. Creek. A little knobbish creek for me tonight. I'm still shocked. Mm. I'm still shocked. Ah, this fucking tastes like a winner. It so is before we so move good. on. Yeah. Before we move on, what was your most memorable moment now looking back at that as something you would either revisit or something you're like, nope, not fucking touching that ever again? Or what were your thoughts now? I, I, well, so philosophically speaking, I love that it was blind. So big thanks to Busty Bourbon Batch at Instagram.com. Triple B was the one that laid this out for us. I was, I was extremely happy that we had a true blind. Mm -hmm. Um, But in terms of, you're talking about the the flavors or? Yeah. Yeah. The flavors. I got to say, I got to say pancakes was a dark horse for me. The Angel's Envy Rye. Mm -hmm. I really Mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. I was, I was actually, for me, it was, it was the, the, the barrel picks kind of shocked mm-hmm. me that they didn't perform better because usually when I have them, that's the thing is it's there, there is a part of your brain, that placebo effect that says, Hey, somebody knows what the fuck they're talking about. They pick this. So I'm going to drink it. And all of a sudden I just assume it's better than anything else I've drinking, but that it didn't, it didn't pan out of this. So uh, fascinating. That that's what blew my mind, and and the fact that Knob has won two years in a row, two in a row, and yeah, fuck. and there's, I would say that it is completely underrated when it comes to when you go to a bar. Very, I don't, I don't reach for the Knob. I, it's almost, I if there's Woodford or Buffalo Trace or something else there, I, I go for that. I almost never go for the Knob, but it's won twice in a row. Well, I mean the nine, and what did we have last year at the twelve. Or something. Uh, it was the reserve it was. last year, yeah. but again, yeah. same same bottle shape, same label, same yep. distillery. So it's you know there there's got some some magic going mm-hmm. on in that little corner of Kentucky and Claremont. <clears throat> so maybe they're just not as good at marketing because if they could figure out how to market, they would slam the industry because clearly yeah. their taste is on point. I mean they're not they're not throwing as much weight behind them as like Bullet is and. You know, there's there's a couple of others like Maker's Mark has got a pretty good thing going. Woodford's got a thing going, but I don't have to tell you. Yeah, uh, oh, that was all I, really good. I remember Wild I Turkey was a split one, right? Wild Turkey, you know, Wild Turkey 101 is, uh, I know it's triple one of Triple B's favorite. And I, because it's one of her favorite, I also have it all the time. And it's just a go-to. It's just easy. You can get the big handles of it. And it's not hard to find. And it's not it's not expensive, but it's delicious. I, and I think in the way that we broke it down, you know, is that was the, the budget section of the, of the, the bracket. So it was just, it's just easy to get to. Mm. So the fact that that, and I think all of us were really struggling on that first bracket. I think we were going back and forth and bracket back and forth. The tape, yeah. Yeah. What about you, Jay? No, I, I echo your same. I think pancakes was one of the interesting things is uh, it, 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 it sometimes sucks where you buy a $55 bottle of something. And you're like, oh, this is going to be awesome. It's a rye. And you're like, that's pancakes. That is syrup. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to go back there again. <laughs> and uh, that was kind of a shocking. So I guess the point is we don't get the luxury as much. It's like wine in some ways. And you don't get the luxury of tasting before, well, unless you're at the winery tasting before you buy. But, um, I just, I just really enjoyed the, the way it was organized, the way it was together. I think I would only, I'd love to see something, maybe something that wasn't, maybe we do a budget versus something else like the, uh, the barrel selects and so forth to see how they fare. But as it stands, the barrel, the single barrel, the barrel select stuff just didn't didn't hold a chance to the uh, to the knob, which is just fascinating considering the price point difference. Now, let me ask you this: Remember, we made a conscious decision. Now, Triple B made she named the brackets and themed the brackets before we ever got them, mm. and we decided not to use them. We decided not to even know what the theme was and went as blind as blind taste could taste could be. Are you okay with, uh, how do you feel about that strategy? Do you think that that is the fairest way to go about it? Do you think that if we knew that the first bracket was the budget bracket, that that would have affected the way that we needed it? Yes. Yes. To be fair. Now, when you get into something like bottled and bond, that's a specific chemistry pick. Rye is a Mm -hmm. chemistry pick. And I think even barrel to a certain extent is a chemistry pick budget was straight up dollars. So if you could figure out a different way to say budget without, because you're looking at economics versus 
like a, a specific way of, of distilling it. Yeah. But we all called the rye. We knew the rye. That was, was the fun part is we're like, that's gotta be a rye or that. Wow. That burns. That's gotta be a bottled and bond. So there, there are places where I think we called it out to be fair. Uh, but I got to go with Jay. Uh, uh, keep it blind. I blind. like it. Yeah. Question no, also I, follow I, up I, is, do we go with others? Do we go with a bourbon versus a scotch versus a mezcal yeah. versus a question mark? No, you can't because they're so completely different. And then that becomes like personal preference. You got to stay like to something within the same ballpark, ball field. Like, you know, you can't, we can do a tequila taste. And if you want to do a tequila taste, if you want to mix it up a little bit, we'll throw like, you know, eight some on tequilas together and we'll see which ones we like the most. That's an easy one. Yeah. But I mean, I'm all about doing a couple of these a year. If you want to do, uh, if you want to do a scotch one, if you want to do uh, a mezcal or, or tequila one, I'm okay with it. But I think where this one strength is uh, the three of us enjoy whiskey. I think one of the funniest meme or TikTok videos or whatever that's going around right now, I don't know if you saw it. I think I might've sent it to you guys, but there's this guy where his, his wife or his girlfriend's yeah. like, tell us how much you love whiskey. Like you love bourbon, don't you? He's like, Oh, I love it. I, yeah. Why don't you drink some? Why don't you drink some whiskey? Right. I, Oh, I love whiskey. I mean, he drinks it. He just coughs. I mean, that was me in all fairness. 20 years ago. I, I did not drink it. It tasted like pure rocket fuel. There was no flavor to it, but the fact that all of these, you can start to pick out, it's almost like wine, right? It, it is like wine. you start to pick out the notes and the things that you like about it. Do you, do you like it? You, you, you get a, a taste for it. I would be in, in all honesty, if we did a similar bracket in tequila, I'd probably suck at it because I don't drink that much tequila. I'm not afraid of it. It doesn't fuck me up or have an adjusted your palate for whiskey. Yeah. yeah, it's just it's just a different it's just a different flavor profile that I'm not well, used to and, or enjoy that much. But and I guess that's the thing about like we have a better understanding of how the bourbon is made, what's been put into it, how it's basically measured its corn, its rye, like how it's mashes and how it comes out. When you get to tequilas, like we'll be like oh, well, that one has additives and that has sweeteners and that has different things that basically are in there. Or do you basically go just, no, pure agave tequilas and so forth. So you end up basically like, well, flavor profile, this one tastes amazing. Well, this one's pure and, you know, is exactly what tequila is supposed to taste like and doesn't have any additives. So it's like you end up coming into this kind of different mindset. You're like, and we personally, I don't have nearly any experience in it and I have not been drinking tequila for that long. I drink it once a month, hardly right. at all. So and looking I, back yeah. on the 21 bracket, we had traditional versus single barrel versus bottled and bond versus progressive distilling. And we did a sweet 16 and that one took a while. If you recall, yeah. Yeah, and that took a while to get through. So the, um, the one we did this year was kind of the big eight. And I, I don't know, I, I don't mind going smaller. In fact, I think if we went down to a final four in different categories, that might be interesting. Uh, mm -hmm. But to, to mm -hmm. Mr. Jones's point, yeah. I mean, if you're going with mezcal up against whiskey, then clearly you have a palate for it. So. Right. Yeah. It's not quite fair. I can yeah. dig it. I can dig it. Well, that's great. We just talked well, about yeah, it. It'd be, it'd be fun to do a scotch one. It'd be fun. It'd be fun to do oh, a scotch. I would be love fun to do a scotch do... one. Yeah, that would be fun. Do I, think, I would say this, this. Yeah, the scotch one we should do together, though, because buying too many bottles of scotch, like, that's the reason why I got into bourbon more. Bourbon's cheaper than buying scotch. <laughs> Let's be honest. Like, Good point. Good it, point. Could get a, it could run you a little too much in the scotch world. When we could, could do, do uh, blend versus single malt versus aged versus, in which case, you'd probably stick with a big eight because yeah. Yeah, scotch, scotch gets up there. But... I don't know. Yeah, the blends will be more light. The single malts will be more smoky. It just depends profile wise. Or even yeah, like, yeah. you know do that. Hey, you could do Zoom. space side versus eye light. Yeah, you could do that. Yeah. Or you could just go straight whiskey showdown. You could do bourbons or <sighs> scotches. Shovel it. Whiskeys. Like just basically we're gonna shuffle we're gonna shuffle these between each other and then we'll see how I guess you keep the scotch in one side versus the bourbons on the other and See how it comes well, out. I think you'll, I know. you'll know scotches right away if they're smoky because your bourbons aren't smoky, yeah. right? Yes, exactly. No, they don't. They we would know exactly what it is when we drink it. Right. Yeah. They don't taste anything like so. Good for thought. Totally different. All right. Now that we talked about brown, 
Talk about Brown. <laughs> Woo-hoo. How you doing? Whiskey and whiskey. This is the darkest brown you got. Yeah. Say, Holmes, uh, where they hiding the scotch? What about, um, brown? That's code for bourbon. Great stuff, this bourbon. Comes from a land called Kentucky. Talk about brown. There's a special rung in hell reserved for people who waste good scotch. Scotch? Oh, yes, I, I think so. Can I have one more of these with some booze in it, please? The nice brown news comes to us from yourtango.com which is an interesting website because it's uh, this story got picked up by a ton of them. So I tried to kind of wind my way back to the original source. Uh, but this one got picked up by MSNBC and this uh, a number of other sources that I found this on. But this one was interesting to me uh, because all of us are married with kids and we're all out of the game, but it is still very specific to uh, what we talk about. It's on brand. It's, it's about alcohol and bars and, uh, <clears throat> This could have been a parenting segment for all we know, but I, I thought it was interesting that we talk about it. The headline is bartenders spread awareness of drink order that serves as secret code for help. And for all of the shitty things that social media does, specifically TikTok, there is a bunch of wonderful things that TikTok does. And so this is a very viral thing on TikTok at the moment, generating over 142 million views as people ask what exactly an angel shot is do either of you know what an angel shot is before we go on only because i kind of knew this story was coming but otherwise no there's i've never heard it before today jones no sorry never heard of this this is new to me what is an angel shot you bobs at home might be asking an angel shot is code that signals to a bartender that a customer is in need of help an order can be used by bar patrons to inform a bartender if they're feeling unsafe so the bartender can get help discreetly bartenders and frequent bar goers are letting viewers in on the phrase that could potentially save your life. Going out for a few drinks at the bar can be fun and a good opportunity to unwind, but alcohol fueled events can also land you in situations where you feel unsafe, whether it's that strange man who keeps following you around or that belligerent person trying to pick a fight with everybody. It isn't always easy to flag down help without causing a bigger scene that puts you in even more danger. Luckily there is a way that you can alert the bartender. Should you find yourself in trouble all you have to do is simply let your bartender know you'd like an angel shot. And if you feel that a situation is becoming especially dangerous or a person is making you afraid, you can ask them to make one with lime, which is a signal to call the cops. If you need someone to walk, out, walk you out to your car, you can ask for an angel shot neat. And an angel shot on the rocks means you need a ride to safety. Thoughts on that? So I would say right off the bat, I love the concept. I think that these types of things need to exist. But, you know, being in California, you're in Arizona. uh, We know that there are special code words on how to order the right in and out menu item. You have to know it, right? You have to know it. You have to be in the know. Who is this helping? Those very few very select few that happen to know this is a thing. Once it gets out, then it's no longer as powerful as it was because, you know, the whole point of it is to stay incognito. And if the guy next to you that's been hitting on you all night, staring at your boobs, hears you order an angel shot, are you in trouble again? You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I don't know. I, I love that we're getting this word out. And I, I hope that people, you know, I hope the bobs out there are the good bobs and not the bad bobs. <laughs> That are listening to this show and and are 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 tuning in on what the angel shot is, but uh, uh, hey, I I I applaud this concept, and I think that it's very important. And we've all been to bars where you know you're next to that asshole that is causing the issue, um, and I'm glad that. But you just got to wonder how many, how many bartenders know about this, right? Like how many patrons know the code word? Is it, it enough? It would be fascinating know. to know if there's an underground network of bartenders that all know each other. I mean, I, I, I hope so. I hope that's the case because um, that's the way I see the world when I close my eyes. So the idea is that it's on TikTok, which means it's part of the younger generation. So you're probably looking at bartenders in their 20s. This is not something that you would find at, uh, you know, Moe's Tavern with all the 40 year olds going there for happy hour afterwards. But this is probably clearly a place where you're going to run into young people and 
you know, hormones and all that shit. Uh, in some bars, you can even ask the bartender to see Angela, which signals them to pull you to the back of the bar away from other patrons until you feel safe. And after ordering an angel shot, the bartender will usually ask who, and that's when you say that person over there. It's a good idea. You know, if the bartender's too, too busy and they can't see what's going on, if it's a packed bar where you're like shoulder to shoulder, they got to be able to get the bouncer involved or they got to get security involved. Um, it's nice. It's nice for a crowded bar. Now I'm guessing that the Bobs out there are probably in our target demographic where you don't want to go to a bar that's too loud or too crowded. So this may not necessarily apply to you, which then qualifies it more for the parenting segment. But I thought it was, it was useful. Jay, you got any thoughts on this? No, I mean, I think that's the point though. It's if, if as this is engineered for the younger crowd, people in those bars, it's not, it's not for us, but it's something at least we know about. Um, it's, it's a positive thing. I think it's the world we live in today um, whereby there are, Maybe people out there and this is a good way to get the, the notification out to people. But yeah, I mean, it's, I'd be curious to see if, does it work? Do you know what the, how many times have you ordered a shot at a bar and the bartender goes, you want a what? What's in that? So yeah, then you got to explain be curious how many bartenders come back with. That. Yeah. So to that point, there was a girl in a situation where the bar did not know what an angel shot was. And if they didn't recognize the panic in her eyes, she might not have gotten yeah. help. Positive. I think we'll see what develops if there's ever any follow-up you know what i mean yeah here's one where they i would like to ask for an angel shot and the bartender to google the definition well as the only father here of a daughter i will tell you that i think that the more things that can be like this and make you feel like you can incognito some way cry for help and say that this person's a creeper needs to be gone um i'm for now we've all been around this this is i'm gonna play devil's advocate even though i'm the I, i'm the father of the daughter here but i also know that I've been around enough people that are like okay a guy that's interested in you uh you know some would even say hitting on you i don't know any other way to say it like the only way to show interest i guess is to be hitting on someone uh and and if you're not interested and they walk away uh that i I hope it doesn't affect that situation where it's like, you, it's okay to still, you know, you gotta, you gotta throw your, your shot in there and give it a try. And if they, they're not interested, as long as you walk away and everything's good, hopefully the angel shot or whatever it becomes in the f near future, it doesn't exist. But, uh, you know, some people just get a little bit too fired up. Uh, when, you know, it, it, let's not, let's not forget that alcohol is involved in every situation we're talking about because they're talking to a bartender. So, yeah, I was also worried about, um, the other devil's advocate play here is that it gets abused. Yes. That's you what just I guess don't what like I'm trying somebody to say in a gentle and you, way. And you use exactly. a special code Thank to you. the bartender, the bartender bounces the guy out of the bar. It's like, well, was he really doing anything? Or she, I was mean, he, there's, there's different he or situations. She ugly or or just you're just not interested was it an in ex that was minding their own business on the other side of the bar you know it's that that this is a great wonderful thing for the vast majority of situations in which it's used but like all things you know and of course I, there are situations that i probably want to be sensitive to because you know i'm not in the same thinking as other people but you do want to kind of train your children as they grow up you know, you need to speak up. And so no means no. And if it gets to the point where there's multiple no's and you're at the bar and the bartender sees it, you know, the bartender will pick up a couple of no's before the special secret code handshake of angel shot. Uh, but also, mm -hmm. you know, for, for anybody that feels vulnerable in that situation, rather than do the incognito thing, just walk up and go, this dude is really creeping me out. Can you please get the bouncer over here is also equally significant. Like, I honestly feel like, I know this sounds crazy, but I want to, I want to give a card, a laminated card, almost like a credit card type card to my daughter. And if she goes to a bar and on that card, that specific card to pay her tab on it, on the other side, when it comes to the numbers that says, I need help, please help me get me away from the situation. Yeah, that's also and a wonderful then you, idea. Then you hand that to the bartender. You, nobody has to be in the know at that point. You just have to be able to read and go, yep, I'm, I've got this. I'm going to take care of this situation. Yeah. So, You're touching them out the thought. Is this a little too clever? Yeah. Right. Like you need to have Simple Visa on the answer. front. Visa on the front. On the back is I need help. Please help me. 
Yeah. yeah. You know, get me away from this situation. And so you give them the visa card and then they look on the other side and they go, Ooh, I'm going to yeah, take why don't care you, of this situation. Why don't you come over here? I can't run your card. Yeah. Your card is being rejected. Can you please come see the manager? You know, that, there's a lot of ways to do the right thing in these situations. Um, and it's not about being embarrassed. It's not, it's about not escalating an already horrible situation. So, right. Especially if the person is with an earshot. Right. Okay. That's, uh, let's talk about Brown. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Let's get into business news. News team, assemble! Let's get down, let's get down to business. And I got news for you. Here at the Bottle of Brown podcasts, when we're doing our Brown Bulletin show, there is one of many popular catchphrases that we like to hear from our vice host, <laughs> Leanne Coventry. And that is hashtag, why haven't we cured cancer? Mm-hmm. Tonight's business news comes to us from the Associated Press. Real news, people. President Biden hopes ending cancer can be a national purpose for the United States. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, through the gauntlet down on the anniversary of Kennedy's We Are Gonna Go to Space era. President Biden says we're going to take cancer down. Aha! Why haven't they cured cancer, Leon? Hold that thought. (laughs) Well, they haven't focused enough on it clearly at this point, but (laughs) here we go. I can't wait to hear how we're going to cure cancer. This Help one is focus. for Leon. President Joe Biden on Thank Monday urged Americans to come together for a new, quote, national purpose, unquote, his administration's effort to end cancer as we know it. At the John F. Kennedy Presidential Library and Museum, Biden channeled JFK's famed moonshot speech 60 years ago, likening the space race to his own effort and hoping it, too, would galvanize Americans. He established a national purpose that could rally the American people and a common cause, Biden said of Kennedy's space effort, adding that we can usher in the same unwillingness to postpone. Biden hopes to move the United States closer to the goal he set in February of cutting U.S. cancer fatalities by 50 percent over the next 25 years and dramatically improving the lives of caregivers and those suffering from cancer. Experts say the objective is attainable with adequate investment. Probably one of the larger caveats of any initiative. President called his goal of developing treatments and therapeutics for cancers bold, ambitious, and I might add, completely doable. There you Mr. Go. Jones. All I'd done. Love to hear your home, thoughts on this. I mean, Mr. Jones. When was this article written? This one is dated this is brand uh, new. September 12th. So this was three days ago. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so midterms around concept. the corner. So it's so, a so brand new concept midterms around the corner. It's, God bless you for saying rah. it. It's, it's, no, a rah, it's, rah. A rah, it's a rah. It's a rah. But I, okay. I like where it's going. I'm not against, like, believe me, I'm not against this. I mean, I want there to be focus in certain things. And thank God we're not still talking about a COVID vaccine. I mean, or whatever. I mean, we're moving on from that. I mean, I do feel sitting here as Americans, we're moving on from that whole thing but it, it i i think this is a positive thing but there's other problems that are bigger than this and i know everyone has cancer and cancer stop is a it. big thing but there are <laughs> bigger problems so i'll stop no there. there there are not bigger problems with cancer okay let's face it there isn't here let's let's Today's let's all problem. break Get ready. Get ready. I'm I'm fired up about this topic here we honestly go. wind it up because I rip. told you how much I hate the reason I always say we haven't cured cancer. Why? Why do I say that? Because there isn't anybody left, I don't think, on this planet that hasn't been in some way affected, touched, impacted by somebody or themselves. Do you know anyone? Do you know anyone that has had never been impacted by cancer? Their family, their friends. It's that prevalent. It's a big fucking deal, right? And so this is a 1 million percent political gaslighting bullshit thing. I think that's what you were trying to say, Mr. Jones, when you brought that up. You were like, oh, you know, like, uh, when's the elections up? That's exactly what it is. And it's insulting that all of us are just going to sit back and think for one second that this is this is a priority. 
This is a priority to decrease it by 50% in the next 25 years. Well, thank you. Thank you for putting a little effort in to the thing that's killing the most people globally. Thank you for limping into this. I, I, I think that the promise is not a moonshot. It's a limp. It is not even close to a moonshot. It's, it's not even ballpark moonshot. This is not, this is exactly what we should be doing. We should be doing better than 50% over the next 25 years, 25 years with all the science and research we're doing with everything we have globally, we're going to try to reduce it by 50%. Hey, Everyone, let's just stand up and give a fucking round of applause for that amazing. Are you shitting me with this? <laughs> who's who's fooled by this? Who says, way to go, way to go, America. You're going to beat cancer by 50% in 25 years. Get the fuck out of here. That is the most limpy bullshit I've ever seen in my life. I'm being too loud, sorry. Uh, President Kennedy was convinced that with a strong commitment of a free people, America could get to the moon first. On May 25th, 1961, he urged the nation to make that commitment. Uh, And then the actual speech from September 12th, 1962, again, 60 years ago, we choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard, because that goal will serve the organize and measure the best of our energies and skills because that challenge is one that we are willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone, and one which we intend to win. President John Fitzgerald Kennedy address at Rice University, September 12th. Now, you could make the argument that 1962 was a midterm. Yeah, it was. But uh, I, I like moonshots. I like big, hairy, audacious goals. I like I like people calling it the fuck out. Like, do you this is what this we're going to do. Big, hairy, you think this is a big, hairy, audacious goal? Is that what you're saying? I don't 50% know what he's in 25 years. Do about it. The only thing that the article references here is that uh, a new federally backed study that seeks evidence for using blood tests to screen against multiple cancers, potential game changer in diagnostic testing, dramatically improve early detection. That's good. Uh, White House coordinator told the AP administration sees huge potential in the commencement of the blood diagnostic study. My point is aim higher. Aim higher than 50% in 25 years. Yeah, I thought that was a weird metric because... You know, Kennedy was like, we don't know what we're doing. Within 10 years, we're going to go to the moon. It's like, what? Fuck's this guy been drinking? But they rallied it. Now, there is no Soviet Union that's trying to spread cancer across the world. So obviously, you need a you need a good, you know, adversary in order no, to galvanize don't. this type of action. It, but is, the- it is the adversary. There is, this is the most bipartisan thing ever. If you are able to actually make a dent in what cancer's doing. There's, there isn't a Republican or Democrat or independent or name your political party of the 19 that London has or anybody in the world. Everybody is on board with curing cancer quickly. That is the easiest, easiest thing to do. It's not a, it's not a win. Everybody's behind it. I, I don't understand why this isn't always the focus the reason is is because this isn't a debatable topic you know what i'm saying like when you go in and you're going to debate your your opponent you don't go in there and say hmm you know mr mr joe smith how do you feel about cancer well i'm against it how about you mr jim smith well i'm also against it well that was a fun debate (laughs) obviously everybody hates cancer we want to we want to beat it we all and the reason i keep bringing that topic up is because why can't we we don't agree on much we just don't this one is easy it's a slam dunk everybody wants to be cancer easy put more money into it figure out how to beat it you know so some filler on this one in 2022 the american cancer society estimates 1.9 million new cancer cases will be diagnosed and about 609,000 people will die of cancer diseases Centers for Disease Control and Prevention rank cancer as the second highest killer after heart disease. The issue is personal to Biden, who lost his son, Bo, in 2015 to brain cancer. After Bo's death, Congress passed the 21st Century Cures Act, which dedicated $1.8 billion over seven years for cancer research and was signed into law in 2016 by President Barack Obama. 
So the timing of it's interesting because if you look at that uh, roadmap, 21st Century Cures Act, that money is about to run out. So this is kind of a an extension of that. Um, goes on to talk about a number of different things, particularly Biden's memoir, Promise Me Dad. Uh, despite Biden's attempts to hark back to Kennedy and his space program, the current initiative lacks that same level of budgetary support. The Apollo program garnered massive public investment, more than $20 billion or more than $220 billion in 2022 dollars adjusted for inflation. Biden's effort is far more modest and reliant on private sector investment. So to your point, Leon, yeah, great. What are you doing about it? Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Yeah, see, that's the, that's the difficult thing when it goes to the private, because no matter how you deal with private, people are trying to squeeze a profit. And so I know that the intentions are strong with the funding to get there, but they're just trying to squeeze a profit and no one works together. Like that's the biggest problem with trying to find a cure for this is people just don't work together on the same thing. They finally get a paper and that gets them somewhere. They don't work as a team, which is what the space race was. It's the biggest hurdle. Obviously you just said it there. 1.6 billion is not going to get you there. We need a lot more funding to find an answer. And so trying to get those same people into the room or find, truthfully, you know, not depending on private sector and profit, which is a big part of biotech research is to come away from that. And it, it'll come because there's been tremendous in, initiatives and it, they've moved things so far forward in screenings and in different technologies, you know, AI basically helping out, but I don't, we're not there today. But I do have hope and I do think we're, we're doing from the stuff that I read and the people that I talk to. It's going somewhere in the healthcare space. But yeah, anyways. Wish, wishful thinking, but 50% in 25 years is, is it's kind of a softball. Uh, there's an interesting quote here regarding. Is a moonshot? A moonshot, the idea right? is a moonshot because it basically says I, the, I, the leader mandate this of you and Does I expect matter? you to figure it out, but it's not, he's not mandating the government like, like Kennedy did with NASA. He's mandating private, the private sector. Um, but what is interesting here is the advanced research projects agency for health, ARPA H. That's something I'd probably want to do a deep dive at some point in the future, because all of these ARPAs, there's an ARPA for energy and there's an ARPA for defense. Um, DARPA being the most popular of them. But the advanced research projects agencies seem to pop up every couple of decades. And their idea is they'll cut a check, a big one, with a very unrealistic goal. And they'll do multiple checks. And some of the most amazing things come out of it. GPS is the first one I can think of. But, you know, the when you get an opportunity from DARPA, DARPA goes, well, I want this in 22 days. And you're like, what? And they're like, yeah, here's a check. Go. So the idea of an ARPA agency in these different areas, this could be something to keep an eye on. So that's my silver lining on this particular topic. That's business news. Let's get on to the crank file. I could look for something in the crank file. Crank file. Whatever. Today's crank file comes to us from Gizmodo. This one is disturbing, although I have to admit it made me laugh. Southwest pilot threatens to turn plane around if unruly passengers keep airdropping nudes. The pilot told passengers he would take the plane back to the gate and call security if passengers continued sending unwanted photos to each other. Uh, for those of you bobs out there that are not mechanically inclined, if you have an iPhone, I want you to go open the screen and then I want you to slide either from the bottom of the screen up or the top of the screen down. And what you're going to get is a nifty little icon that looks kind of like, what would we say? We would say it's, it looks like a triangle <clears throat> with a bunch of circles around it. That is the AirPlay logo. That means you can drop to anybody else with an iPhone. And apparently what some guy was doing on a Southwest flight taken off from New York towards Mexico was he was sending naked pictures to everybody with an iPhone. That's awesome. In I a very that. horrible way. Yeah, I mean, horrible. he's based, it, it's a vindictive, he's like, a monster. I, I'm basically 16 years old and my girlfriend in high school just broke up with me kind of tantrum, but it made the news. So I think it's our, uh, our, our little lesson learned here of uh, making sure that, you know, you uh, 
control your airdrop button. Make sure it's not on everybody. Keep well, the contacts. The, the social webs blew up on this one because it was, you know, dad threatening to turn the car around during a summer road trip or, you know, references to snakes on a plane. Um, the rowdy summer passengers were en route to Cabo San Lucas. <laughs> when an outpouring of unsolicited airdropped nudes started pinging their way through the plane's aisles. With the nude onslaught getting out of hand, the plane's pilot felt compelled to grab a hold of the intercom and threatened to return the taxiing aircraft back to the gate. The pilot's frustrated plea was captured through this August 25th TikTok. Well, here's the deal, pilot said. If this continues while we're on the ground, I'm going to have to pull back to the gate. Everybody's going to have to get off and we're going to have to get security involved and your vacation is going to be ruined. So, folks, whatever that airdrop thing is, quit sending naked pictures and let's get you to Cabo. Or you're going to be living in a van down by the river. What would you do, though, if you were the captain and the flight attendant called you and said, we don't know what's going on, but somebody how, keeps saying naked uh, pictures. How do you know it's the not the captain thing. also getting the photos? I mean, he's got the airdrop on also. That's what's <laughs> very possible. <laughs> he's the one getting the photos. And he's like, oh, I probably should stop this. I got to be the big dad in the play. Like, it's just. Maybe he does. It's a petty, immature thing that happened. And I think it's just funny how everyone's talking about it. It's so just, I guess yeah, some random is. got it and showed the flight attendant and oh, like everybody on the plane probably got it. Oh. Uh, Southwest acknowledged the event in a statement to Gizmodo. The safety, security, and well-being of customers and employees is the Southwest team's highest priority at all times. When made aware of a potential problem, our employees address issues to support the comfort of those traveling with us. I love that your Southwest voice is Minnesotan instead of Texan. <laughs> Yeah. I thought immediately of the lady from Office Space. Now, Milton, make sure everybody gets a piece. <laughs> Don't you know? <laughs> Don't you? Apple did not immediately respond to Gizmodo's request for comment. It's probably the, the zinger there in that entire article. Yeah. A handful of commenters yeah. on TikTok praised the pilot for stepping in, with several likening him to a fed up dad scolding misbehaving kids to get their shit together. I'm going to turn this plane around and everybody's vacation is ruined. Major dad vibes. Another user said, This feels like mom turning around the car. If you don't, two don't stop, I swear to God. Funny or not, it's worth pointing out that the unwanted sending of nudes, also called cyber flashing, is a criminal offense in multiple states. From New York to Texas, states have cracked down on unsolicited dick pics through fines and even potential jail time. In the old days, you had to have a long trench coat and good running shoes. New York Councilman Joseph Borelli said in an interview with the New York Times in 2018, technology has made it significantly easier to be a creep. Why do we have to have a name for everything? <laughs> Why do we have to? Put your loathe. Why do fun. we have to say we have identified this as cyber flashing? Just, it's not necessary. It's so fucking stupid. Sorry. The article closes with all the more reason to consider turning off your phone during takeoff. Bullshit. <laughs> That's uh, this feels like an airline airline employee to turn off your phone before takeoff. <laughs> I think that was an airline employee. Let's get to because Florida. Because This one is about as far as Danny's going to get into the political realm. But again, tragic as it is, just like the last story, this one fucking made me laugh. I just, I, I, could, I, couldn't, I couldn't help but laugh uh, about this. So this one comes from CNBC. DeSantis flies two planes of migrants to Martha's Vineyard. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis flew two planes of immigrants to Martha's Vineyard, escalating a tactic by Republican governors to draw attention to what they consider to be the Biden administration's failed border policies. DeSantis, who is mentioned as a potential presidential candidate, appears to be taking the strategy to a new level by using planes and choosing the upscale island enclave. Massachusetts Governor Charlie Baker, a Republican, said he was in touch with local officials and the short-term shelter was being provided. So, yes, Ducey. And Abbott and Texas are putting 
uh, arrested or detained migrants at the border on buses and sending them to Washington, D.C. or Chicago or California or anywhere that's a sanctuary city. And the idea is they're thumbing their nose at liberal urban enclaves uh, that are not paying any attention to the what they refer to as a border crisis. This one was interesting because DeSantis, who's in Florida, decided not a bus, but a plane. Not only a plane, but a tiny little <laughs> island where these people may not be able to escape from and to another Republican state. <laughs> so the reason that this made the Because Florida file is what exactly was he trying to accomplish? You know exactly what he was trying to accomplish. Yeah, I know what he was trying to, but he seems to do all right. this stuff with the best of intentions and he just falls flat on his he face. Just, he's I disagree. Fucking. I disagree. I'm I am I am for DeSantis. So I will I will be that guy that you guys can smash on. I think that a lot of things he does are wild, but I also am one of those people that go. Good, good. <laughs> Somebody fucking did it because he's got the balls to do it. I th these these immigrants being transported from Abbott by bus, whatever, and you know the the mayor of New York losing their mind, and the mayor of Chicago, you know, losing her mind, and then shipping them back out to her suburbs. This is a, this is exactly what they're trying to do, which I think is a very fair conversation we're having. Only the only reason we're having it, two planes of immigrants to Martha's Vineyard, isn't going to affect anything. It isn't. It's not that many people. But the fact that we're having a conversation about it is exactly what we need to be having, which is states, cities, commonwealths, are making decisions based on their beliefs, yet they have no impact. They're not impacted by these decisions that they're making that are impacting all these border states. And I live in a border state. I'm by, I'm an hour and a half from a border. And I honestly, and I, even when I was in Ohio, and I remember the wild sheriff, I think he was in Arizona. And oh, is it yeah. a pile? Yeah. <clears throat> and everybody got around out here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everyone got fired up about this guy. How dare he do that? And in he my personal guy. opinion, I was thinking, what do I know about what they're going through in Arizona in Ohio? I know nothing about it. Am I dealing with, you know, a mass immigration of Canadians rushing into <laughs> Ohio and and causing crime and and creating new mafia and shooting people in the streets. No, I, I that's not something I have to deal with. So why does my vote on this thing have to impact these Arizonans? Arizonians. It doesn't make sense to me. Now the whole country piped up and said, "How dare you, Arizona, treat these people like that?" And I understand why people think that. But if you're not in it, I un oh, are you talking about the, the, fuck the pink up. underwear in the local prison? I'm no, talking it's not about underwear. They're the jumpsuits. I'm talking about people who are physically being affected by this immigration crisis. And if anybody doesn't think it's an immigration crisis, go to any border town and watch what's happening. Yep. It's sad. It's sick. It's disgusting. And the the people that are being bust are like not even a fraction of the people that are actually ending up in Florida, Texas, California, any of these border towns. So the fact that they're busting them there and they're making it a big political statement and that political statement is actually affecting these cities, even though it's tiny, it's tiny compared to what they're actually dealing with. God fucking bless them. Do it all day long. Fucking bust them, fly them everywhere. These people that keep voting and making these policies that don't have any impact on them whatsoever. You know, like that's why we are the United States of America. And yes, we need to have a single federal line of thinking in a lot of things, but 
there's, and I've said this before on, on previous podcasts, how can the people of Hawaii feel the same as the people of New York or the people of Florida or the people of Texas? We all have different issues geographically, socially, all these things are impacting us differently. And yet we all think we're the same. We're not. We're the United States of America. And we have real issues that are impacting us. And we think that we're all just one big thing. I don't know. That's how I feel about it. And I think it's hilarious that people are losing their minds about it. And, and, and they're saying things, this is inhumane to use humans like this. They volunteered to get on that airplane. They didn't force them on that airplane. They didn't force them on these buses. They just offered it to them and they took them there. So point counterpoint, Mr. Say, Jones. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'd love to hear another side of it. You have any, you have any uh, alternate perspective on this? It's a big giant fucking mess. <laughs> I mean, it's echoing Leon's comments. I mean, he's absolutely right. There are, are people voting for things that happen in border towns that really have no idea shipping people over to sanction areas to go, Hey, look, this is what I'm dealing with. I just want to see some kind of moving forward in some kind of immigration policy, some kind of path to citizenship, something that moves forward because it just moves too slow in our own political climate. And maybe this is a kick in the pants, but the problem is, is that the two sides, don't agree on much and it's just it's not gonna stop like that's what's crazy about it like immigration people coming out of central america in the southern border immigration's a problem over in europe like it's it's an absolute mess in there too it's this will always be a problem and i don't know if there's a real solution like a real there's only reactive Let's try and come to some understanding. But um, yeah, this isn't going to end. This isn't the last time we're talking about this. And this will come back up again in three, two weeks, whatever, a few months. Like it's always around. Do you think it's a bullshit political ploy though? Um, totally. I don't know. It's, it's, it's a, the, yeah. The governor, it's, the governor of a state is free to do what they want to do to take care of their, their border problem because they are paying for resources to house headline and transport um people that are that are across again to your point leon the united states of america is the idea that it's 50 independent countries that all get together that's what united states means by word definition so you know what people want to do in arizona is is shouldn't have any bearing on what people do in wyoming and vice versa this is this is a state problem but the unique thing about these states is that they're on the edge of a larger collective which is known as the federal government a uh, little background here. Texas Governor Greg Abbott began busing thousands of migrants to Washington in April and recently added New York and Chicago as destinations. Arizona Governor Doug Ducey has been busing migrants to Washington since May. Passengers must sign waivers that the free trips are voluntary. So, I mean, these people are probably like, great, I don't have to pay to get there myself. I was going to go to the city anyway and look for a job. So that exactly. kind of makes me chuckle. Um, a bus is not that expensive. But the idea that I thought was interesting is the Florida legislature appropriated $12 million to transport illegal immigrants from the state consistent with federal law. <clears throat> and so wow. the, the reason that I think this guy's a goon, whether or not he's well-intentioned or whether or not he's effective, is $12 million to put people on a plane to make a statement when he could have been much more effective with the bus. That's why True. I well, think he's a goon. All, True. Well, okay. Well, okay. Let's just back up a little bit. Let me just tell you right now. Coming from the aviation sector, there's no fucking way that anyone spent twelve million dollars to fly two jets. No, I don't it's care. Not two. No, it's not no, two. It was it, it was two jets. It was two Florida jets. Up there right. twelve million t- transportation for okay. illegal immigrants. Not just this okay. situation. So that they, doesn't make no, any no. sense. No, I agree with what you're saying. What I'm telling you is, when we started talking about the two planes that arrived in Martha's Vineyard. Those were not, that wasn't $12 million. No. He's also going to send buses. The 12 million is going to cover a lot of transportation of, of immigrants, not a just the two buses. Planes. Yeah, there's nothing in the text that suggests the 12 That's million is just for the planes. It just, it seems like, yes, a, it seems no like way. a waste. It seems very stunty. That was, that was a middle finger, period. 
Of course, all of these are middle fingers. Yeah. So at least we all agree with that. That's all it really is. It's douchey. But hey, got a headline. I, get, I disagree. I disagree. It's, I don't think it's douchey. It's sending the message that people need to hear, which is why am I the one dealing with the problem and you're not doing anything about it? You're going to share in the pain we're feeling, which is a bunch of people that show up with no job and a lot of desperation across the border just show up what do you do with them tell me how many of the states that that hug the border on the southern border how many of them are red versus blue yeah I, that's, that's another topic question. for another for another yeah, talk show another, we gotta make some yeah. room for your for your loathe later leon so that we'll close this one on because florida and we'll come back to it later we'll be right back back let's get into parenting we can make kids right now that's why we're here it's not the years it's the mileage uh so this one's kind of teetering on miscellaneous topic it isn't necessarily parenting per se but i thought it was interesting enough to talk about this comes from sciencealert.com uh dated 27th of march so i've been holding on to this one for a while music is just as powerful at improving mental health as exercise a review suggests the article begins next time you're not able to get out to the gym, maybe spin some records. Instead, new research suggests the positive impact on mental health from singing, playing, or listening to music is around the same impact experience with exercise or weight loss. That's based on a meta analysis covering 26 previous studies and a total of 779 people. The earlier research covered everything from using gospel music as a preventative measure against heart disease to how joining a choir can help people recovering from cancer. Growing number of studies are finding links between music and well-being. However, the level of potential boost and exactly why it works are areas that the scientists are still looking into. And that's where this particular piece of research can be helpful. Increasing evidence supports the ability of music to broadly promote well-being and health-related quality of life. H-R-Q-O-L. Thoughts on this? Sir Jones? (laughs) I mean, look, anything that centers you i mean we always need that right you have all these outside forces in the world and you need something that centers you and a lot of people say well i go and work out and i'm in the gym and then you're this obsessive compulsive person that needs to like all of a sudden change their diet working out four times a day you know i'm just have to be this fit person you know there's the overside it's just it's a balance in this world and so finding we all have that and you know i don't know if you guys you guys probably not. I listen to a lot of trance music. Why? It centers me. Like it just works out. No, I don't do it when I'm driving the car. It would turn into a video game. It's more when I'm, you know, working or just trying to, you know, not have focus. Like you're trying to look for focus and that's what it does. So listening to music, listening to records, being something simple, it all helps out individually it all is a question about what works for you, what doesn't work for you. So, I mean, I think with our kids, then you look at the parenting side, it's to have a sense of calming, you know, bringing them away. That's where, why does Disney make so much money off all their music? I mean, it's pretty much all my kid wants to listen to. So it's, it's an interesting concept, but I don't know. Thoughts. I, I play music all the time. My Sonos app is if it were a physical item, it would be bruised because I, I play music in the house all the time. Yeah. Sometimes people need it. It's music is calming versus silence. Silence feels like anxiety of you need to be doing something. Music fills that void all of a sudden by listening to something. I think that's part of it. Uh, the meta-analysis of 26 studies of music interventions provided clear and quantitative, moderate quality evidence that music interventions are associated with clinically significant changes in mental HRQOL. Additionally, a subset of eight studies demonstrated that adding music interventions to usual treatment was associated with clinically significant changes to mental HQR, HRQOL in a range of conditions. So that's something like the Calm app or 
white noise, blue noise, pink noise, brown noise, uh, all of those are advantageous as well as focus music. So for, for you, Jay, it's, it's up tempo trance music, but there's also a completely different subset. You can find like 12 hour videos on YouTube of focus music, which is just very long drawn out. I think you're right. I think it takes up that extra space in the brain. Leon. It's yeah. Are we trying to say that this is a replacement for exercise in any way, shape or form? No. Okay. It's a point, well, it's a point okay of calming. That. I mean, it's a point of calming. Exercise so needs its own place though. It's, it's mental health. I mean, for mental health. That, yeah. I think that's, that's what they're leaning towards is, is yeah. you can exercise or you can listen to music for mental health for physical health. I don't think there's an argument. So it's only mental. Okay. All right. Bye. I agree with it. I think the other side, you're going to be totally like against it and be like, ah, you can't just listen to and then the fat sweat away. It doesn't work that yeah. way. Yes, exactly what I would say. There's no way you can listen to music and lose weight. That's not a thing. Man, I just listened to a 12 hour set this trance and it like I had the fat just melt off my body. It was well, it great. Is, it is true. After you work out or you after you exercise, you do feel better. There is a release of endorphins. No, but the interesting it, I, part is that maybe me, me, music uh, hits those exact spots in the brain as well. I would agree. I think they everyone has their own. Like everyone's different. That's what I like about this. I remember actually when I started working, they had a whole thing where it was like, you couldn't listen to music while you worked and you had to like be careful in kind of which group you were going to go work for because they yeah. were like, they were like against it. that like, situation. Yeah. Where they're like, like, and this is because a manager doesn't understand. I mean, that's, that's what we're really getting at here. And I think mm-hmm. maybe this is an evolution like to, listen to the radio at a reasonable volume between the hours of and one. <laughs> Yes, Milton, that is correct. Um, it's kind of that. And it was kind of interesting how like, I was like, I'm never going to that group because I think that's ridiculous because I have been listening to music. That's the only way I got through college, like period, is because I could not sit in the library in silence because I would go nuts. Yeah. Let's study about, let's, let's do calculus all day long. Mm-hmm. I think let's there do are calculus studies that, that music stimulates neuron firing so I mean, there's people have been talking about different. for a while my, my only point is that we're all different and it's whatever works for you it's, that's all it is i think listening to music can be calming and productive yeah, some people yeah, can't do that that's it i will not but, fight that no and you, you can't fight the fact is that like yes i listen to music 12 hours a day and i lo- lost weight yeah right <laughs> i will fight that i will fight that <laughs> i think you should yeah, because Lizzo would be fucking 110 pounds. <laughs> but damn, she looked good in red. Uh, we'll close this one out with the researchers hope that studies such as this one will encourage health professionals to prescribe some kind of music uh-huh. therapy more often when it comes to helping patients recover from illness or maintain good mental health. Recover from illness. I got a cold. Play some tunes. <laughs> okay. Research was that, published but, in okay. the journey, the Journal of American Medical Association. That wraps up parenting. As if you haven't had enough fun tonight, Leon. Oh, it's time for Leon Lowe's. So far, Danny, I haven't heard a single logical reason. No, no, don't accept this. It's frustrating, and we haven't cured cancer. We have not cured cancer. I don't know the answer. I'm just ranting about it. We grabbed something from cbsnews.com that is near and dear to my heart and one of these places where I could probably do an equally effective load as Leon, although this is Leon's segment, so I'm going to back off. Uh, CBS News poll, big majority favor maximum age limits for elected officials. Leon, the floor is yours. What's the median age, you think, for the United States? What is the median age of the humans? United States of America. No, no, United States. Mm, United States of America. I think it's well, the baby boomers are out there. One? Yeah. Something like that, yeah. What do you think it is? 41, 41 or so. I think I'll yeah. Google it. I'll, I'll 37. No, I, I, 37, 37 and 42. I already know the answer. No, oh, what is it's, it? It's, it's 38.2. Oh, right? so, so it's just below 40 years of age. How old is our fucking president right now? Oh, he's got to be close to 80. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How old is the speaker of the house? She's old too. She's old too. She's dirt. She's right. dirt. And She's how about, not dirt. <laughs> She's fucking dirt. Dude. How old is Lindsey Graham? Uh, Lindsey. Lindsey. They're all. Oh, all Diane dirt. Feinstein is dirt. 
they're so disconnected dirt dirt. from where we really are at this point. And I think we all just need to take a big breath. Do you know, when are you allowed to stop flying an airplane? Do you know, like if you want to fly an airplane, like you want to be a Delta pilot or you want to fly for American airlines, when do you are not allowed to fly anymore? I guess I didn't know they had an age. I think there's, it's 57. You think there's an age, yeah. age limit? I believe there is, oh. right? No? no, there's absolutely. Yeah. Well, why? Why do you think there's an age limit? Safety. For a pilot. Safety. Yeah. It's, you, you, your motor skills get slower as you get older, period. Believe so me. It's, it's, it's not about discrimination for age. It's mm-hmm. about ability, right? One would assume. It's well. about ability, right? Your yeah. ability to pr- process information at the same rate and as quickly as you need to, to accomplish the job, right? It, it's six, it's, it's 64 to 67. It's where we're at now. Why are we only allowing people at the age of 67 to fly an airplane, but we let an 80 year old run the country? The, the most powerful over and country over again. again. It's, it's over and over no again. Arguments like over and over one, right? again. And I think, um, I think these are the types of conversations we need to be having very early on. And I think we've had this discussion many times where we say we are sick and tired as Americans of being given the choice between garbage and a little bit less garbage when it comes to election time. Who the fuck is propping these people up? And I mean propping them up because they're so old they can't stand themselves. For us to elect them, there's there's got to be a better way. Like we gotta put it, we gotta put age restrictions on these politicians. Not them, also the Supreme Court. So hey, I got anyway, some, I'm I got some stats for you, well, Leon. Nancy you is talking? 82. Thank you. The Donald is 76 and yep. Grandpa Joe is 79. How old is the Schumer? The expected, who, the, Senate? the expected presidential ticket in 2024 will have a president, one of those two presidents into their 80s. Yeah. Why are we dealing with this? Why, why, why are we accepting this as a real option? Does anybody really think their grandpa is firing on all cylinders? Schumer Does anyone is ever talk to their grandpa? And said, yeah, you're sharp as a tack. I mean, Schumer's 71. Good. Schumer's 71. 71. McConnell is 80. Come on. McConnell is 80. <laughs> Why are we accepting this? Uh, talk like a turtle. Guys. And the last one on the list is Mr. McCarthy, who is in fact 57. So Listen, I'm, a potential I'm future speaker of the house is actually a youngin. Before all of you out there that are just, how dare I? Be an ageist and strike down people of different age. Go talk to your 80 year old grandpa or grandma and, and ask them, are you as sharp today as you were when you were 40? And what ask and just, you know, send those responses in. I'd love to hear anybody who actually <laughs> yeah, fucking just, thinks just assess their mental they're activity. sharp at 80 that they were when they were 40. It's ridiculous. We need to step up. We need to stop handing these extremely important, extremely powerful positions that have a massive impact on our daily lives to people that are way past their prime. Let's just, let's, it's it's not a, it's not being mean to them. I appreciate all the service they've done. Just go retire, enjoy yourself. That's what that last trimester of your life is about. But get the fuck out of the way so that people who are sharp can get in there and get done what needs to get done. These people have to walk away at the age of 65. Nobody in government, nobody in the judicial branch, the executive branch, or the legislative branch should be over the age of 65. I can't, I'm not going to make that law, obviously, because I'm just a nobody, but I think we all should seriously think about it. Why are we listening to these people? These people leading the most powerful nation in the world are geriatric. 
And we need to understand that. And we need to understand what impact that has on us. They're not sharp. They're being pushed around. Your grandmother, your grandfather at the age of 80, 75, 70, they're being highly influenced by anybody who tells them anything. That's just the truth. I will be too. I'm not knocking myself. Of course, if my son or daughter or whatever comes up to me and says, this is this, I'm going to go with that. According to the United States Constitution, a person must be age 35 or over to serve as president. To be a senator, a person mm. must be age 30 or over. To be a mm. representative, a person must be 25 or older. Specified in the United States Constitution. So if you go back to 1789, what was your average life expectancy? It was probably 50 or 60. So yeah. from a certain point of view, I could see 65 or 70 as, as pushing it. But I think we should absolutely draw the line in the 70s and definitely by 80. Get them out of here. Get them out of here. We're dealing with it. I, I don't care what side of the political fence you're on. But if you are not cringing when our current sitting president is speaking, I don't understand. I know well, he has. That's the, we've talked he about. Has, he's got speech problems. About that. He has speech problems. He's always had speech problems. It's more than that, document. though. It's I, more I, than I, that. I'm, I'm not going to disagree, but there is that. Uh, He's I been get lost it. on you, 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 stage you, you, multiple times. He doesn't know where to walk. He well, has yeah, the said same thing. The last times. president doesn't know how to walk. He's like, yeah, I don't know how to go down. Last president had his too moments too. Old. He had his moments yeah, too. They all, they all do. They're fucking no, old because they're fucking old. They're fucking old. The last young president we had was Obama. If you really want to look at it, he was sharp. It. And he, he, he was, was the best speaker we've had in the last forty years. Oh my God! Okay, there Why? you go. Because well, the was uh, pretty good too. Let's throw some of these results of. out. Should there be maximum age limits for elected officials? Seventy-three percent of those surveyed said yes. Age limits. We're talking about a margin of error here, about two, two and a half points. So this is actually pretty good statistically speaking. Percent who favor maximum age limits for elected officials: seventy-one percent among Democrats, seventy-five percent among Independents, and seventy-five percent among Republicans. Everybody wants the old people out. Percent who favor maximum age limits for elected officials, period, by age. This was the one that was interesting to me. Among the age range of 18 to 29, 68% want age limits. Between 30 and 44, our demographic, 75%. 45 to 64, 75%. And 65 plus, 74%. Pretty so everybody, age, agrees. everybody agrees. Everybody agrees. Everybody agrees. What age be when offered a list of ages? Age 70 is the top answer chosen. This is older than yeah. the current average yeah. age of that members of Congress. High. About a third of U.S. current U.S. senators are 70 or older. A third? A That's third. What it says. Yep. A third, a third, a of, third of United States senators are 70 years of age or older. And over half of our judicial branch you, is over okay, that mark. Okay, let's take a step back. Do you think this simply has to do with the fact is that it's always about a fight? I mean, it's a numbers game, right? We understand that, right? It's what's your majority between you know, your house, your Senate and so forth and what political agenda you can get approved. And so it's kind of interesting when you add this topic in there, it means you end up creating battlegrounds that weren't there before, right? Like Mitch McConnell, the turtle would not mm -hmm. be holding into where he is now, not to say like there wouldn't be someone else that would step up behind him. Yeah. yeah I that's mean, what I would be saying. Yeah. It's, it's just like, you gotta have somebody behind him, but at least someone that understands what's going on in the government. His, fucking him which listen is, his district would vote for a republican no matter who it was no, right? and i don't disagree like it's and absolutely so let's get somebody in there that's yeah. 50 instead yeah. that's all i'm saying yeah someone that and knows Mitch, a little bit more go enjoy a nice retirement you know you oh. served your country well go have a nice retirement Dipshit. and let us run the country because <laughs> you are on the sunset side of life just let it go and move on we i I don't even think this is that controversial. The fact Not that you said numbers. everybody out there is 75%, 75%. <laughs> uh, let's see. Ch -ch 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 -ch. Average Across age, average tenure of a United States Senator is 9.6 years, which is only a couple of terms. So, I mean, term limits, uh, uh, but, according to the law of averages, term limits are already in place, but I would like to see it codified. You get two or three chances to do your shit and then you get the fuck out. Yeah. The idea of a, of a career politician just makes my skin crawl. Well, and we, that's what we've, we've created. talked about this a million times. Term limits. Everybody except for the people that make laws have all agreed term limits need to exist, except for the people that actually make the laws. Make laws. I don't want to so be out we'll of a job. We'll never get that. Yeah. Well, why would we ever get 
somebody we elect to say we need to have term limits. It'll never happen. Right. I'm not going to vote for that. Based on they're they're going to ensure gonna vote their for own themselves survival. to get out of the job. Yes. That is something that George Washington should have put in day one. Yep. Because he, he, he would have known people were going to live longer. He volunteered to leave he, himself. Yeah. He knew what needed to happen. And he didn't he didn't realize that the other branches wouldn't follow suit. Yeah. So we're stuck with lifetime appointments, politicians. basically. I mean, it's kind of what we're at. We're at. I mean, no one's going to not vote in. Well, Feinstein, have you I, I can't remember another California senator other than Feinstein. I, I, in holding office, obviously we had Boxer for a while and a few. But well, I mean, Boxer, are, Boxer bowed out because she couldn't take it anymore. Feinstein's shit; they're going to have to peel her off the wall. No, no, she's done this year. Actually, she's I think done. She's, actually, she's, she's done. done this year. She's actually retiring this year. Um, she has to. Just, it's, <laughs> it's just. A, it, I mean, dude, we're talking about a, like a senator that's been sitting there since I was in elementary school. <laughs> hey, I'm McCain had to die in Arizona. He he was going to stick around mm. forever too. Through that, but. Anyways, it, uh, I'm not going to open Pandora's box and bring up the Supreme Court, but that's the only thing I think needs some kind of term period because all these, of them. Old, all these of them. fucking old turtles basically sitting there are not wise. They're fucking dead weight. Right. Anyways, Excellent loathe, Leon. Good loathe. I liked it. I agree. Let's get to uh, bottom yeah. of the bottle. This bitch is empty. Yeet! This one I liked because it uh, it's probably going to apply to us at some point in the in the near future as we get eight, as we get older. But uh, grog blossom with a hyphen. Grog blossom is a word that means the network of burst blood vessels on the face and a particularly the nose of a heavy drinker. So if you think of old pictures of W. C. Fields, go away, kid, you bother me. He always had a red nose because he was an alcoholic. And so when you drink and those little tiny capillaries burst and you get those little patches of red. Grog Blossom. Okay. Now I got a name for it. Now you're going to name for it. Hashtag get it. Get out at the bar. And get it. Get it. And get it. Evie. That's our show. You can email us at bottleofbrown at gmail.com. Call us at 602-529-4562. Leave a message for Danny, Leon, or Mr. Jones. Give us ideas for content. Refute anything we say on the show. If you disagree with any of the things we talk about, we want to hear from you. If you like the show, please like, follow, subscribe, share with a friend. We're on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Share a drink with us next episode. Same brown time, same brown channel, bottle of brown.com. This place is dead anyway, man. <laughs>